Hi, Amy with AJ's Vintage Designs and Fashion Toppings here with another furniture flip. Now this one's going to have a Beetlejuice theme to it. It's going to be the blacks, whites, a uh, hue of purple, some stripes, a little bit of everything, kind of whimsical. So this one's gonna be fun. The first thing I've done, as you can see, it kind of has a funny finish on it. Um, I did give this a scuff sand. I used my surf prep sander, 180 grit sandpaper, took it over the entire piece just to knock off that high gloss. It is a slight bleeder too. Um, and since I'm gonna be doing these blocks in the center here, it also matches the other piece, which I've already finished. I'll insert in pictures of that as well. Uh, but these are gonna have white and black stripes. Since I'm having white and I'm concerned about bleeding, which the tannins bleeding through causing that discoloration, I am going to put boss, Dixie Bell's boss, in these areas only. Everything else is gonna be uh, black with a hint of a dark purple. So I'm not worried about the bleed throughs there. But anywhere where I have the white, I need to put a stain blocker because this is a bleeder. Um, so I am actually gonna be using Dixie Belle's uh, Gray Boss, which is their stain blocker. It's a primer that will block those stains and those tannins from coming through. I've, so like I said, I've already given it a scuff sand, so I don't have to worry about adhesion. I have something for my paint to grip onto. Um, so it has a scuff sand, it's been cleaned really well with Dixie Bell's White Lightning. You can use any TSP based cleaner. I use Dixie Bell White Lightning because it comes in a granule form. So I get to mix what I need when I need it. It saves me a lot of money there. It doesn't cut into my profit margin. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm gonna be doing is doing the priming on these areas and on the sides. The sides are also gonna be black and white stripes. So I need to prime wherever I'm putting the white to avoid any bleed throughs. Like I said, I'm not concerned with the rest of it because the rest of it's gonna be black. Uh, black and dark purple. So let's go and get started. I'm going to apply the primer. Now you'll see this primer has a slight gray hue to it. This is the gray primer. For me, I find that gray is easier to cover. Um, so I do usually gravitate to the gray uh, first. And I'm not worried about if I'm getting out of the lines because this is going to be black anyway, but I want to get in these recessed areas. All this recessed trim is going to be gold. I'm gonna be showing you how to put the gold in. I have another video that's probably already up by now um, that shows how I get the gold in the recessed areas. So let's go ahead and get this piece primed. Okay, now for the next step. Now, my primer has been on for 24 hours. I have two coats of primer on there. Like I said, I use Dixie Belle's Boss, which is a stain blocking primer. The only, and I'm gonna be painting all this in fluff and caviar, which is the black, black and white stripes. I just taped it off because I'm gonna be painting with black now, which is the caviar. And um, not sure whether my white stripes are gonna be on the outside or the inside. So it's just easier if I taped it off because black is harder to cover when I'm gonna be doing the white. So I just didn't wanna to get too much black in there. You don't have to tape it off, I just did it to make it easier down the road. So I would be using also, dipping my brush, look at those two purples. I'll be dipping my brush half in each color just so that I can get, I don't want it as bright as the amethyst but I don't want it as dark as the aubergine. Aubergine won't show up with the caviar. But so by doing a combination of the two, I'll get a slight purple hue to this piece. Now this isn't gonna be a, a very obvious blending. I, if I wanted it, the purple to really stand out, I would just paint purple and then blend it into black. But I'm gonna be painting it all black and then while it's wet, I'm adding purple on edges just so it has a hue of purple. So it's an easy way to blend because I'm not having to take two colors and blend them together. I'm just highlighting some areas with a little bit of purple. So let's get started. I'm gonna start off with a little bit of caviar and I'm gonna get a coat of caviar on here on the whole thing, one coat. Now the blending is going to take two coats because I like to paint in thin layers. Um, if you uh, put your paint on too thick, it takes longer to dry, one, and if you apply it too thick, when, if it's not completely dry, uh, and then you start clear coating it, you do take a risk, no matter what brand you use, um, you do take a risk that that paint can chip off over time because it was too thick right there. Um, so I like to do thin coats, and this will take two total coats. And yes, I'm gonna be blending on both coats because I wanna be able to, on my first coat, um, it's gonna tell me what it's gonna look like. And then I can make changes to it on my second if I need to. So that's why I like to do my blending on my first and my second coat. Just so the fact that while I'm blending on my first coat, if I don't like it or I think it needs something more, I can do that on the second coat. So right now I'm just gonna get this first coat on here. I will open these drawers when I'm done to let it dry 
Now, um, the reason I'm leaving my drawers in, I get this question a lot. Why did you leave your drawers in? I wanna see how the blending and how the colors go together. So if I have a little bit of purple here on the corner, maybe I want that purple to go a little bit onto the drawer. The drawer is not there, I can't tell to put it on. And so I am going to get this black on real quick. And while it's wet, I'm gonna add the purples. And yes, I forgot to tape off the bottom of that drawer. That's okay, I'm doing stripes here anyway. So I do have a little bit of black where I don't want it, but that's okay. Also, I'm gonna be adding gold in these recessed areas, so I'm not too worried about the paint there either. I'm gonna get the black in there just so it's easier when I do my gold, but I don't have to worry about it being perfect in there, because like I said, all these little lines and details are gonna be highlighted in gold. So I'll be doing that as my last step after I got the whole piece painted. Now, while this is wet, I'm gonna add some purple, okay? I'm gonna switch brushes. I'm gonna use the same brush. I'm gonna dip my paint, half of my brush in the purple, and or the amethyst, and half in the aubergine. So I have both colors on there so they'll blend easily. Okay, so I'm just going to add a little bit of purple over that black on all my edges, and I'm just gonna feather it out. See how that virtually disappears? You can still see the hint of purple, but it's not obvious, it's not very strong. Now if you get brush strokes or if you get any pulling, this is a water mister bottle. These are important when it comes to painting. So I am going to mist it with a little bit of water, just a little bit, and I can continue to drag that brush over that area and smooth out that purple transition. But since I have that black paint underneath, I'm not doing a huge blending, but you can see the slight purple hue that's gonna happen around some of my edges and some of my corners. I want a little bit of purple here, but I can see I don't have black all the way down. I wanna make sure I'm painting right over the black. I want the black as the base underneath, okay? And now in with the purple. Not going all the way in. I just want some highlighting of the edges so in the light, you're gonna see purple. Now I'm gonna bring you in at a different angle so you can see the purple. So can you see that slight hue of purple? You can really see it up there. The light's hitting it really nice up there. But that's what I'm gonna be doing, is just bringing a little bit of purple into that black and just stretching it out, just feathering it out, okay? So now all my corners and my edges are gonna have a slight purple heel. Put a little bit of water on there and add a little bit more purple to this edge here. And bring that into the black. So it's not going to be a strong purple. It's just going to, in the light, you're going to be able to see a purple heel, like a little purple glow. Can you see that little glow here? That is my goal for this whole piece. Okay, let's do this whole top drawer so you can see what the top drawer is gonna look like, and then uh, we'll be moving on to the next step.
Okay, so I have the first coat on, and just remember, your first coat, don't sweat it. It's not gonna look the way exactly that you want. You're just wanting to get that, it's what we call like a crumb coat on there. You wanna get that first coat on, that's why I applied it thin. I can still see wood through some, a lot of my black, I can still see wood through it. So you're applying your paint thin. Now you're gonna let it dry overnight is what I recommend. You let it dry overnight. That gives a great base for you to start blending on on your second coat. So I'm not worried about how this looks. I'm not worried about if I have enough purple or if I have too much purple. Right now, I just have that base coat on here so that my next coat has something to really grip onto. Um, so I'm gonna let this dry and give it plenty of time to dry. I'm gonna pull my drawers out so that they don't dry shut on me. I'm gonna pull my drawers out and then I'm gonna let it dry overnight and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna do the second coat. I will show you a quick snippet um, of when I do the second coat just so you can tell the difference. I will do a drawer and I'll show you the difference between one coat and two coats and why you don't have to sweat it on your first coat. So let's go ahead and let this dry and then we'll come back and we'll do the next step. Okay, so my first coat has sat overnight and it's nice and dry, uh, so moving on to my next step. This is an option to get a smooth finish. You can use 800 to 1000 grit sandpaper, 600 grit, anything high grit sandpaper. I want that buttery smooth feel. That feels more like a factory finish. This feels like chalk paint. So I'm gonna take my, I, my sandpaper and I'm gonna gently wipe over this. Looks like I'm ruining it, but I'm not, don't worry. I'm just wiping over it very gently. What I'm doing is that is knocking off the porousness of the chalk paint and shutting the, uh, closing the pores. That's what it's doing, it's closing the pores and taking off the chalkiness. So I'm gonna do the entire area that I'll be painting. Okay, and my paint has been on here for 24 hours. So I'm not worried about, I'm not worried about it getting reactivated. I'll get this section right here too. Okay, I'm not worried about it getting reactivated by what I'm doing next. I've already done this section here. Uh, but what I do then is I need to get rid of that chalky residue. So my paint's been on here for 24 hours. It's not gonna reactivate with the water. So I'm gonna now mist it. All that area with a little bit of water. And I'm gonna wipe that dust off. And that, that takes all those little scratch marks that I just put in with the sandpaper, it takes those off. Now I do have some areas that are texture on the piece. So if some of my slick stick is showing through. That's okay, it'll be covered up with my next coat. Or not my slick stick, my boss. Okay. So I wiped all that dust off and now I'm going to do my second coat. I'm going to do my second coat right here so you can tell the difference. That is the caviar, which is the black, and then a mix of aubergine and amethyst, which is the two purples. I only need the two brushes for that. I always put my black on first because I don't want my purple to be very strong. My purple is just going to be a glow. So I'm going to mist my piece again. So my surface is a little damp. And I'm gonna apply my black. I'm going right over that purple I already did. That I did the purple on the first coat so that I could see what it was gonna look like and decide whether that's the look I want. It gives me a chance to evaluate what I've done and whether I like it or not. Now I'm gonna go back into the second coat repeating that same process. You'll get to see the difference between the first coat and the second coat. I don't know if you can see that little dry mark right there. That is gonna... It needs to be dampened a little bit. There we go. I don't want it to cause any drag marks when I'm painting. So I got my wet black caviar coat on. Now I'm gonna come in with my next brush. Remember my purples. I'm gonna be going uh, half in aubergine and half in amethyst. You can just use one of the colors if you want, but I like the two colors together. And I'm gonna wipe that purple on over that black. That black is so wet. And I'm just coming in from the edges. But since I did that sanding I, in between coats, I have a nice, soft, smooth surface to do my blending on. Just pulling the purple out as far as it will go into that black so that line kind of disappears. And if you get drag marks, then you just spray it with water, which I'm getting drag marks. This area is really dry in here. So I'm just going to, you can mist your brush or you can mist your piece. Okay, I'm gonna pull that purple right into that black. 
It's going to get lighter and lighter as it gets into the black. And that is it. The purple's on the outside, fading into that black towards the center. Okay? Okay, so you can see how that purple is just going to slowly graduate into the black. It's just very subtle. I want it to look like this a little bit of glow. So that's the difference between doing your first coat, which wasn't very nice and neat looking, to a solid coverage here. Now remember, in all these recessed areas, I'm going to be coming back in and putting gold, so I'm not worried about that. Now I'm going to, let the, I'm going to do this whole piece the same way, the rest of it, just like I did this section. Then I'm going to come back after it's dry, I'm going to take this tape off, and I'm going to start doing my stripes, and that will be the next part of the video. Okay, I'm back, and now it's time to do the stripes on the, on the drawer fronts, so it will match the vanity, vanity that I'm working on. I'll insert a picture of the vanity in case you forgot what it looks like. So I need some stripes to be able to match that. So what, the only thing I've done off camera is I just put a coat of white paint here in these sections. I use Dixie Bell's Fluff. And um, it's been sitting for a couple days, so I feel very comfortable putting um, tape on it now. And so I have put little pieces of tape. Let me zoom you in. I put pieces of tape here. I kind of wanted to see how, you know, the size of stripes and how many stripes I can get on a drawer. So I'm going to be doing, I want white next to the black. I don't want a black here and I don't want a black here. So I'm doing, um, this, this will be uh, taped off. So this will be white, black, white, black, white, black, white. I wanted to make sure I ended there. That's why I chose this size of tape. Now I am slightly off, just barely. That's okay. I'll make up for it. I mean, I have just a fraction, fraction of a, um, of an inch to be able to make, uh, to kind of compensate for. So I'm going to go ahead and do my taping now putting my real full-size tapes on here. I'm just going to do this one drawer, and then I'll, the rest of it is all the same. Okay, pull that out. And I need to put some full-size tape on here now. But what I like to do next is I got my tape down, rub down all my edges, make sure they're all rubbed down, and then I add a clear coat over my edges. And I've done lots of videos on this, but um, I want to seal down the edges. So I'm putting some paint on the tape and the white. I'm sealing down all those edges to prevent when I paint black from that black bleeding underneath my tape line. So I'm just going to go back and forth over the tape with my clear coat and that not too much clear coat you don't want a ridge but I'm going to seal down all those edges letting it dry and making sure that my black stripe that I'll be putting on that that black stripe is not going to bleed underneath my tape edge I don't want a ble uh, bleeding of black paint underneath the tape so I want a nice crisp clean stripe so I'm just going to go down all of my tape lines making sure I have no ridges I'm going to seal it down. My clear coat on my, all my edges is dry, so I can go ahead and put my stripes on now. So I'm going to go ahead and paint these center sections in black. This will take two coats. So I am doing these, all these stripes in black, which is the caviar. Going over white can be a little difficult. So like I said, it will take two coats. So I'll put this on, I'll let it dry. Come back and do another coat. Take it off gently. I'm going to give you a close up of how nice these stripes are turning out. So that is how you get the perfect lines. I have no bleeding edges, nice, crisp, clean. Now I'm gonna go on to the next step to do the fine line details. Okay, time for those fine line details. I'm using Dixie Belle's Gemstone Mousse in the color Golden Gem. It is a water-based product. So I clear coated my piece in satin the night before. I'm applying the mousse down in those deep creviced areas. Not worried about being neat. I come back with my baby wipe and clean up all those lines when I'm done. It's quick, it's easy, and great results. 
Well, there you have it, a step-by-step -step tutorial to get this moody, whimsical look. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I enjoyed painting this piece. It is one of a two-part set. I'll have pictures at the end. Make sure you click on subscribe down below and that little bell so you're notified every time I put up a new video. I do put up videos every Wednesday. And with that in mind, put it down in the comments. What type of painting techniques do you want to learn? What type of tutorials would you like to see? And then I can put that into my planning as well. So, well, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I hope you all have a fabulous day. Bye-bye, everybody.